All right. So let me clarify a couple of things. I am no longer on Air America, and the show is not co-hosted with Janine Garofalo. Uh, and you pronounce my name Cedar. But, you know, when I go on radio, you say Cedar. It doesn't bother me because more people are likely to find the show that way. The Guttmacher Institute in 2011 shows that if you give free birth control to women, the insurance premiums per individual on that plan across the board will rise anywhere from $37 to $41 a year. That is in relationship to a five to $14,000 uh, premium. However, that does not factor in the fact of how much savings down the road both insurance companies and, frankly, all of us will save from uh, preventing unwanted pregnancies, from all the other health issues that uh, people take contraception for, the contraceptive pill for. So you have... Um, Couples using no method of contraception run a 85% uh, uh, chance of unintended pregnancy within 12 months. Insurers that waive copays also avoid shelling out for complications that are often accompany unplanned pregnancies, including high-risk situations as birth of success in children that aren't properly spaced out, a woman doesn't know that she's pregnant and drinks during those first crucial months, preteen girls having children. Contraception does not cost insurers nearly as much as people assume. Only 28% of women use the most expensive form, uh, form of birth control, the pill. Will that go up? Likely. But 37% of couples choose tubal sterilization or vac vasectomy. That won't change. Um, <clears throat> and so we know that the savings are going to be much higher down the road. And like I said, the 2000 study by the National Business Group on Health, it winds up costing employers 15 to 17% more than providing this free contraceptive coverage. Because Peter Schiff's premiums will go up. Now, here's the problem. Peter doesn't spend his day going over the actuarial tables. So Peter Schiff does not realize that by not providing contraceptive care for his employers, that his premiums that he will pay for his employers goes up because one of them, or two of them, or five of them, I don't know the numbers, it's in the study, will have complications that will arise. Maybe he's hurt in productivity because one has an unplanned pregnancy. Maybe there's other uh, complications that happen because they don't get it. Peter's not aware of this because he has a business to run. But he refuses to look at the data because it doesn't fit into his paradigm. And that is not to mention the cost that is borne by uh, other people outside of, um, you know, woman gets pregnant, loses her job, happens to switch her job, has no insurance, we end up paying for it through uh, Medicaid. I mean, uh, this is going to save society money, it's going to save uh, employers money, and it's going to save insurers money. The data is there. He has no data to cite anything. The idea that insurance companies haven't jumped on this is the functional equivalent of people saying in New York in 1996 or whenever it was, what was it, 2003, when they uh, banned um, uh, trans fats in restaurants. Do you remember when they did this? And everybody was saying, this is going to destroy the restaurant business in New York. It's going to destroy it. Well, years later, no, in fact, it hasn't impacted the restaurant business at all. But what we do know is that the, uh, through, um, through surveys and tests of blood reports, that the level of trans fats, plastic, artificial trans fats in Americans' bloodstream is at half of what it was. 10 years ago. There have been significant health benefits and i.e. cost benefits to society. And despite the fact that um, all these restaurants were going to close up because they can't use plastic in their cooking, it didn't happen. 
you do not have to travel very far for industries to assume that certain things are going to destroy their industry and find out it doesn't. That's just human nature. People don't like change. And what also appears to be human nature is they ignore data. Because it doesn't fit in with their libertarian ideology. Because to a certain extent, I think Peter was being disingenuous. Because if this really was about cost for a libertarian, they would have gone and dug up the data. He would have been able to say, no, Sam, you're wrong. I've seen the 2000 study by the National Business Group on Health, but you're not aware of the 2003 study by the blah, 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 blah. No, libertarians, philosophically, do not like government intervention unless it's just sort of like the receded government intervention that sets up things like corporations or the ones that protects their property through government violence. I mean, that's the problem with libertarianism, is that they just want the status quo, because more often than not, it benefits a certain group of people that they perceive really are deserving of that benefit. Remember, like, you know, these people, you know, at one point, he's saying, uh, people are going to start buying the pill more. Uh, because it's going to be free. But in the next breath, he says, these people are so irresponsible, they probably won't even take the pill. That, that statement, that 10-second clip of that entire exchange is the most illustrative of really what is behind libertarianism. F the suckers. F the weak. F the stupid. F the less fortunate. But guess what, folks? Even if these people are stupid, even if these people are irresponsible, they live in society with us, and we cannot deny their existence. And we can either have society function to absorb the stupidity, or we can just simply pay for it in many other ways. We cannot build that barge in the ocean and bring all the stupid people there and rid ourselves of all the weak and the infirm in our society. They're here. They're not going anywhere. And we can either address it or we can pay the consequences.